Okay, well, let's let's start bringing it around towards the UPC. What caused you to become involved in this whole universal product code symbol project? Well, I had been in the keyboard uh, group. I had been managing the keyboard group, okay. and I had a run-in with my manager, and uh, I got transferred to uh, Paul McEnroe's group, okay. and there I was given the job of uh, investigating uh, personal and item identification. Well, then when Marvin Mann brought the, the first request from the uh, UGPIC at the time. And UGPIC is uh, Universal that, that was the Product Code. Yeah, it was... Uh, no, Universal Grocery Product Code yeah. Committee. It had so many names. It went through a whole bunch of them in the beginning. Yeah. But uh, the proposal was... Marvin Mann took it to McEnroe, my boss, and of course he gave it to the group that was involved in personal and item identification. And in that group, I was given the job of trying to come up with some kind of a pose, uh, proposal. Then uh, I was learning about barcodes and what they meant and how they were to be built. And I had been given some of the uh, uh, proposals that other companies had made, including uh, RCA's proposal. And I realized that RCA's proposal with the bullseye just wasn't going to make it because of the strict requirements of the printing. It could only fit, it had to fit in a one and a half square inches and be able to be printed on any kind of a printing press that was in use in that day because they couldn't afford new labels or additional labels. It had to go along with the existing label on the packages. Uh, timing was also critical, incidentally, Bill. You're probably aware of it because that's when the nutrition requirements came about. So anyway, I had come up with what I thought was a reasonable linear barcode. Just about that time, Paul McEnroe gave me the, uh, a letter from the headquarters that said, write a white paper supporting RCA's bullseye code. And he handed me that and he said, now I want you to do this George, we have to make a presentation in two weeks, but I'm going on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I looked at that and I looked at the proposal, at the bullseye proposal, and being the kind of person that I am, I just could not do what he asked to do. <laughs> So I came up with my own barcode. Actually, it was only a six-module barcode. And his problem was printing, right? The it was printing. You just couldn't print it and fit it in that area and meet the requirements. The, uh, the printing requirements, the area uh, requirements, the uh, reliability requirements, the whole bit. So I came up with a code that I thought would fit. And I prepared a presentation for the brass, uh, Jack Keeler. Uh, was one of the ones, our lab manager. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw Paul come home. He lived across the street from me. He came home from his vacation on a Sunday. And my son, my 15-year-old son, had just finished helping me with the flip charts, the big easel flip charts. Right. And I said, okay, I'm going to take him over to Paul, and I'm going to show him to him. And I <laughs> went into Paul's house, and I said, Paul, you better look at this, because... I didn't do what you told me I was supposed to do. I've done something entirely different, and I don't want you to go to the meeting and not know it. So he looked at the proposal. I went through it with him, and he says, all right. He says, I have no other choice. He says, you go in, you're going to present it, and if they don't buy it, it's your ass, not mine. <laughs> and the proposal was for barcodes it instead was a, of circles. It was, that's right. It was a linear barcode didn't look much like the one today. It had uh, six bars per module. It had some checking, and I think it would have worked. Okay. Now, it was only a 10-character symbol. Now Instead of 12, which is the current. Yeah, and uh, you know the way it came about to be 12. No. Well, the committee, before they were thinking, the UGPIC, before they were thinking of symbol, they were thinking of number. How do we convert it to numbers? 
and they went to uh, uh, McKinsey and Company. McKinsey and Company helped them, and they came out saying they only needed 10 digits. Now that they only needed 10 digits, they had started converting some of the files, and they had talked to the grocery manufacturers and had convinced a number of them to go to a 10-digit code instead of their DNBs, their SKUs, all the numbers that they were using. Okay, five-digit code, right? Because the item code was five digits. Well, they had different. Uh, each okay. company kind of had a different one. Okay. So they convinced them that 10 would work. All right. Uh, just about the time, I came up with a seven-module code, and uh, I had been Why did IB you go to seven from six? Well, I went that? to seven from six because I presented the six-module code to uh, Art Hamburgen in Rochester, and he says it was not, uh, it would not be reliable enough. He said you had to have something like a two out of five code. Well, the two out of five code wouldn't work for various reasons, so I came up with a seven module code, which is the one you know today. Right. I was in the midst of working on that when Udpick came back and said, we need an extra digit. They called it the system number digit. We needed one to say it's groceries, the one to say it's drugs, one to say it's uh, in-store marking. Instrument. Circuit 2. Oh, random system, weight. Okay. Random right. weight. And so forth. Yeah. And they said, we need five. Well, it was just about five systems. Yeah. So, so just about that time is when I came up with the idea of the split symbol. Okay. So it was nice to make the split symbol two six-character symbols, which gave me room for the system number and room for a module check number. Right which I insisted on. Right. Again, being the, the type of guy I am, I would not suggest something that didn't have the checking. Right. Yeah. So, it's interesting again, uh, Bill, when we, with the first proposal, if you notice, the check digit is not printed. Right. I and it was that. stripped in the machine so that they did not have to admit that it wasn't a 10-digit number. <laughs> then they took the zero and they put it halfway up so that it didn't look like it was in line with the other 10 digits. And they right. said, see, it's only a 10-digit number because zero doesn't mean anything and we just ignore it. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs>